Howdy folks, John here. Welcome to part 10 of the R2-D2 build series. In today's video, we'll be getting all the electronic components installed and working inside R2. Starting with battery placement, connectivity and access. Then we'll move up to the main component board and servo connections. I'll also show the inexpensive charging panel and data panel I made to give you some low cost functional ideas. We'll finish up with a final test run with both fingers crossed that the magic smoke is not released. Now I think it's safe to say that before you consider mounting the bulk of the electronics in an R2 build, you kind of have to know what batteries you're using and where you're going to place them, both from an aspect of access and space. Those of you who have been watching this build series know I'm going to be powering my R2 with uh, basically a 24 volt system. I'm running 6S LiPo packs and I'm gonna be running with Genzace lithium packs. I've been using Genzace packs for years with my RC helicopters and they are by far my favorite uh, LiPo pack to date. So it only makes sense that I'm gonna use them in the R2 build. I will have links below in the description if you wanna check these packs out or any of Genzace uh, lithium batteries if you're considering doing a lithium powering option on your R2 as well. So the three boxes I needed checked off the most for my battery placement was access, charging, and versatility. And I think I came up with a fairly good solution. So taking a page right out of RC helicopters again, I have decided to go with a tray system where you can take the battery packs out, all of them with a simple tray replacement. And I just made this on Tinkercad and printed it out. It's just basically a plate. There's little indentations for these little circuit boards where I've got an XT90 plug and a balance plug for my 6S packs. And I've got space for up to three packs on this trace. These are wired in parallel, both the plugs and the balance ports. I could run just with one pack for 5.1 amp hours, or I could run all three for up to, uh, what, 15.3 amp hours, which is a lot of capacity. Chances are two would be enough, but I've got the space. So I figured, ah, let's make it for three packs. And they just stick on with Velcro, just like on an RC helicopter tray. I'm not gonna worry about strapping them down because this thing's not going inverted, I hope. So this way, you could pull the tray out if you want to charge the batteries outside of R2, or I've also got this configured so you can charge them inside through the charge panel. So now with that all hooked up like that, this has essentially become one big 15,300 milliamp hour 6S LiPo battery. Now I've already got some wiring in place here. I've got my main power relay already in place, and I've also got a shunt and this is just for my current meter, which I've got up in the charge panel. I will show that when we've got it all plugged in and working. The way this works is here is our battery pack and it just slides in from the back. Oh, I've got to take this bolt out. I just used the one bolt from the back of the uh, cross brace here. And there's a little catch at the front. It just overhangs to catch the edge of the tray. And that just slides in and then you screw the bolt back in and that goes into a threaded lock nut. And that's really nice and secure. It's not going to move anywhere. So I think I've got all my components laid out the way I want them and have them all wired up. So now I can start transferring all this onto the Lexan component board. Figured I'd better see how this plate fits before I start going and drilling a bunch of holes in it to fit all the components. I've got it set back a ways using four little brackets I uh, made on Tinkercad and printed out and they just mount to the adjustable screw rail on either side. And I think I've got enough uh, vertical clearance here for adequate battery access. You can fit the battery tray quite well without it interfering. Now I can fit the components. Got all the goodies mounted on the control board here. Quite happy with it. Small form factor. It fits quite nicely. And all these components I already went over in my R2 basic electronics video. I'll link to it below in the description and up in the little card doodad. This is quite a simple build. And you know, it may look like there's a lot going on here, but it's just basic power distribution. 
We've got power coming in from the battery going through a 60 amp main breaker and that's feeding a fuse block which just distributes the power to the various items on R2. The lower fuse is going to the amplifier. Uh, this one's going to feed the voltage regulator for my 5 volts for my RC system. Uh, this one is feeding the 24 volts up to the dome. This big one over here is feeding the Sabertooth dual motor controller for the foot motors. And then when the one below it is just feeding the Siren 10 motor controller for the dome motor. This is a three pole isolation relay, which I talked about in that uh, video that I mentioned on the electronics. And this is to isolate the motors from the speed controllers in case the fuse blows or when the batteries are disconnected. So we won't back feed EMF back into the motor controllers, which has the potential to take them out. And on the back side of the board, show you quickly what's really going on here. So I've got my servo outputs for my various servos that I'm going to plug in from the body. We've got the soundboard servo, the trigger servo, the door servo, the arm servo, and then this 10 pin DuPont connector that's going up to the dome for all the dome electronics. This is the plug for the amplifiers. Thought I'd better power it up before I mount it, just in case I screwed something up and uh, let the magic smoke out of it. But everything appears to be working correctly. Got a little uh, voltage monitor as well, just to check the uh, output voltage of my uh, voltage regulator because these are adjustable. And what I was really impressed with is just how little current this is using in standby mode. Of course, we're not running any servos or any of the motors, but just sitting idle like this, it's uh, sipping 159, 160 milliamps. When it comes to building wire harnesses and wire management in general, I think you fall into one of two camps. You either love it or you hate it. I fall into the first category myself. I can lose myself for hours down at the bench building this kind of stuff. So fun. And a little tip, when you're building your wiring harnesses, make sure you mark off all the ends to what they do. It will literally save you hours of probing time with your multimeter trying to figure out what you did. One thing is for certain, if you're not too good at making custom servo harnesses before an R2 build, you will be well practiced and really good at it by the end of an R2 build. I don't know how many servo connector crimps I've made over the past two days for this thing. If you're uncertain how to crimp your own servo connectors and make these extensions, I've got a separate video on it. I'll link to it below in the description and up in the card doodad. Eventually. Component board fit well in there. Hopefully it works as good as it looks. It's wired up to the shunt and to the power relay. Just fit our battery tray in here now. Plug them in. Yeah, so there's still ample room to uh, access things in here. I've got all the rest of the front end electronics in. There's our soundboard and trigger. Amplifiers below that on the panel. I'll show you what I've done with that panel. I didn't really want to spend any money on it. I was just originally going to have the amp installed, but put some eye candy in there. Just made this little mount for my specific speakers. Again, I'm with Tinkercad, printed it out in TPU. So it's soft, so it kind of is rubbery and deadens any sound vibration. Don't know if you'd strictly need to do anything like that, but I thought I've got some extra TPU, may as well use it up. And here's my charge board, which has got the main on and off switch, as well as the charge plug. And I just put a couple little LEDs in there and there's a voltage and current monitor. Let's take a look at the front. So my little charge panel actually has some functionality. Here's the master on off switch. So that activates that main power relay and I'm actually switching the ground. I'm not running any power up to the switch. I just wanted to run ground. So it's a ground switched relay. And then here is an eight pin GX aviation connector. 
This is to charge my LiPo batteries and balance them. And then instead of having just a bunch of red LEDs here, which is what the screen accurate version would have, I just got one of these little voltage and current meters. And I'll have links to all this stuff below in the description. So for my data panel, haven't done anything special. Again, the main thing I wanted on here was my controls for the amplifier. So I've got bass, or sorry, treble, bass, and volume. And even at half volume, this thing is loud. And then I just got one of these cheap VU meters that's monitoring the sound. Put a couple of voltage monitors in, some blue LEDs and a couple of red ones. And think I spent under $20 on the panel, not including the amp, of course. And oh, these are just the pots to adjust the VU meter level. On printeddroid.com, they've got a really neat data panel, but it's, you know, over 200 Canadian by the time it ships here, 250 bucks, 20 bucks. It's enough eye candy for me. Maybe I'll do something different in the future. Right, so just going through all the function tests. His head is moving. Bring it up a little closer here. Hollow projector moves. We can uh, just turn his head. We'll see the backside one as well. So the back one and the front one I've got moving, not the top one. Hollow projector lights. Oh, that's blinding. Oh! <laughs> yeah, those Cree LEDs are super bright. And so I can switch the front one on. I can switch the back one on there. And the top one. And we can also do a complete reset to reset the TC's lights. Not that I can ever see needing to do that, but if you want it to play the message or whatever, we can do that as well. And that's using a servo controlled rotary switch. Of course, all the sounds work. At least I hope they do. Yep. Got to turn the volume down. It's too loud. So that is the electronics done. Everything's working well. I've got some squeaking in the wheels. I still have to shim them properly, but I haven't done any of that, of course, because I've got to take them off to paint. And that's the next thing. I know in the last video I said uh, this would probably be the last video, but there was so much to cover with the electronics. I thought I'd better do a separate video on it. And we're exactly one month away from May the 4th. So uh, I'm kind of hoping I can do a final May the 4th video on this with it all painted and finished. But if not, I'll do a May the 4th video. If you guys have got any questions about this build, let me know in the next few weeks. And uh, if there's enough of the same reoccurring questions or something really interesting, I'll, uh, I'll address them in that follow-up May the 4th Be With You video. Until then, folks, thanks for watching, and have a great time building your R2. Cheers.